Well hello, um, I thought I'd do a refreshed version of my making colloidal silver video that I made a few years ago. I thought I'd start by uh, showing you this. This is a, I can get them for 25 bucks. It's a um, part per million meter or it measures total dissolved solids. And I'm going to do a little test first. I'll probably include it with this video. Just to show you before we get into the main crux of things. So, three glasses. Right. right, tap water. Hope you can see this. Which we have at around about 200, 198 to 200 parts per million of total undissolved solids. Right. I'll have a drink of that too. Okay, next step. So I've accidentally purchased uh, spring water. Spring water, pure spring water. Brand new unopened for the test. Okay, spring water. Same amount. Boy, I hope you can see this. And uh, there we go, back to zero. Number two was the mineral water. There's about 19 parts per million. Total dissolved solids. I'm getting to a point here. Right, well, back to zero. Spring water, i drink of that too. And now, what you really need for making colloidal silver, ideally. Demineralized or distilled water, same exact thing. And result, brand new. I'll drink this anyway. So. Right. And number three was the distilled water, also known as demineralized water. And that has three in this case, plus per million of uh, totally undissolved solids. Totally dissolved solids. Can you see that? So that has less uh, total dissolved solids than anything. Now I. Uh, used to make colloidal silver for a while using uh, the purest water I could find because I thought that's the ideal thing. I never found one that had zero parts per million. So, um, they, and they all mark it, no matter who they are, they all say, um, you yeah, know, this is the purest water you can get. No, it's not. There's one, and I can't remember the brand, it used to live up there on the shelf. But it was an Australian one anyway. But it doesn't matter for colloidal silver, really. Okay, just stick with consistency. There you go. Right, on to the next part of the little documentary here. Now I have here two as pure as you can get silver rods. Um, you can buy these, I'll put a link down on the video. You can buy these from a metal merchant, um, no matter what country you're in. Um, I've bought from this guy a couple of times. One time because I accidentally threw some away thinking they were bits of coat hanger I'd hacked up for some project. But they cost around about $80 for a length of wire. Yay big. And I just cut them in half and uh, with a pair of pliers put a bend on the end there so they could hook into the glass. Well these glasses are a bit short but now that I uh, mismeasured I can't bring myself to throw away that silver because it was it's fairly expensive. Now you must absolutely no going back on this you absolutely must use 99.999 percent pure silver. Do not get anything less because it could potentially be dangerous. Okay and this is as pure as silver gets and to demonstrate that <coughs> I'll just uh, bring out of the vault that I went to uh, open a uh, one kilo silver bar that I have which again is 99.0% purity. Uh, you cannot get absolute purity in silver. So you see that's a legitimate one kilo block there. You could in theory use two of these in the water. Yeah, it's the same exact thing. This is the same as this. Only this is in extruded wire form. 
So, um, okay, let's get down to it. I'll give you a close up of these wires, but uh, let's get on to the next part of the actual generator. Okay, now the fun part. Pretty basic stuff, and this is the whole point. You don't need to buy a, a dedicated colloidal silver generator. Um, but you can if you want. But I'm just here to show you you can do this very, very cheaply. Uh, I tend to make it in larger things now because um, uh, I was using a glass, a very tall glass, and uh, you don't get all that much out of it. So, old jar. The demineralized water again, or distilled water, which we just tested. And for this case, because I do want to make a fair batch of it, I'm just going to fill it all the way up to the top almost. All right, the two rods that you saw a moment ago. Okay, I'm just going to pop. Oh, I should get that little meter to show you this is the water. <coughs> okay. Okay, here's a little friend again. Oh, we've got three parts per million. So that's definitely the distilled water. Okay. Um, right, the little rods. That's where the bend, little hook. And my homemade generator, um, which in this case is a plug pack or whatever you know them as. I put that on there so I'd remember. That's actual output voltage. It's rated at 14 volts DC. It really doesn't matter. You could have a little, say, 15 volt AC plug pack. It doesn't matter. AC or DC will still make colloidal silver. So, in fact, I'll... Uh, a little experiment in mind to show you for another video. Alright, so yeah, just grab what you can. You could use a 9 volt battery, I'm pretty sure that would work as well. Some people often just get three 9 volt batteries and clip them end to end, so you get, uh, what, I don't know, 16. Um, yeah, they get that. <laughs> they get that voltage. Right, so what I do here, very simple. This is rough, I haven't even bothered putting new clips on the same. I just clip this one here. Try to let you see it there. Clip him on there. Right, so there's one. And the other one I'll just I'll put him around this side so I don't block it too much. Oh no, you can see it here. So the other one there. You just want to make sure the rods don't touch each other. So you might want to just there you go, that's fine. Nothing scientific about it. Really. Okay, you've got a plug pack. Plug him in there, switch him on, and it's pretty windy outside. Hmm. There's a storm coming. Okay, so again, just try and make sure it doesn't stick out too much. So maybe like that. I'll get around one day to putting the little. Well, this is a pain in the bum today. Hmm. I will put some little alligator clips on. Anyway, that's fine as long as they don't touch each other. I think you can see that okay there. So, now we just wait. See, it won't have anything happen yet in that large volume of water. But remember, we're starting at three parts per million. A lot of people like to time it with, uh, you know, say 20 minutes, 30 minutes. If it's only a small you know, glass jar, whatever. Uh, when I've tried pure water, absolutely pure water that I mentioned, it's actually taken like hours, two or three hours. So um, this would probably take an hour or two maybe because of um, the volume in the glass. I might straighten that up in a sec. And uh, and uh, yeah, so... Um, also, a lot of people just like to have, say, 10 or 12 parts per million of colloidal silver. I've been for some years going on um, what was recommended to me for medicinal purposes, like if I, you get a cold or bacterial infection, 
which is what I used on my face if you looked at my rosacea video. Um, yeah, I like to go to about 20 or 25 parts per million. So that'll take a fair while. I've got to whip out for a minute or an hour and uh, I'll come back and we'll check this out again. Okay, we're uh, <laughs> now seven hours later and we're going to check this with that little meter there. And we are finally 22 or 23 parts per million. Which is good enough, I think, for seven hours. Which again, now, here's the thing. This is because it was almost pure water. Uh, you will find if you use tap water, which I don't recommend, um, that would be probably a third of the time or less. That's just a fact of life that the less total dissolved solids that there are in the water, the longer it takes this to make. I'll just get a close up here. You can see that um, there's tiny bits of bubbles coming off there. On one, what effectively is an electrode. And let's have a look at the glass here. The other one you can see is not as affected or affected in a different way. Pretty cool, eh? So, that's how we do it. That's how you make colloidal silver. I'll just show you how to clean up. Okay, so we've got the two silver rods here. Two silver rods here. And we'll uh, just give them a rinse off under the tap to see how long it's sticking to the water. So you just need to put a paper towel first, I always do. Silver black, that's actually pure silver. And wipe the other one quickly. And something I don't usually do, but I just have lately. Give it a bit of a scrub with the scrubber. I don't think this makes a huge amount of difference, but apparently when you buy the kit, if you want to buy a generator, you get a little scrubbing in it, so uh, why not? And this is all it is. That one there, as you can see, hopefully, um, like I mentioned earlier today, uh, seven hours ago when we started, that was a beautifully smooth rod, but last time I used tap water, and this is what happens. I'm quite badly pitted. Not that it makes any difference, but... Yeah, there you go. I'll just give them a rinse off. I'll just put them on the sink to drain for an hour or whatever, and put them away safely. Make sure that uh, you don't mistake them for coat hanger wires like I did because uh, at $80 for a bit of rod like that length yeah it's not a mistake you want to make too often so that's it any questions just feel free to ask and thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you can get more of uh, my updates and other little uh, surprises I have in store